Although following proper lab protocol should greatly reduce the risk of a lab accident, accidents can happen in a laboratory. Consequently, it is important that you know how to respond in the event of a laboratory accident or emergency. In this video, we will demonstrate the proper way to respond in a variety of situations, ranging from minor incidents to emergencies. Examples of the types of emergencies or accidents that you may encounter in the lab include fires, chemical or biological spills, broken glassware, injuries, personal exposure to chemical or biological materials, radiation and radioactive materials. Your first line of defense against lab accidents is prevention. By wearing proper PPE and abiding by laboratory rules, the risk of an accident or emergency can be greatly reduced. In addition, you should read the Safety Data Sheet, or SDS, for all compounds that you will be working with while in the laboratory. The SDS contains important information about the compound, including hazards, proper first aid for exposures, proper spill containment, and physical characteristics of the compound. Standard Operating Procedures, SOP, are very important as they provide guidance in the form of written procedures for the safe handling and disposal of particularly hazardous substances, including carcinogens, chemotherapy agents, engineered nanomaterials, hazardous drugs, and toxins. In the event of a lab accident or emergency, here are some steps you should take in order to ensure your safety and the safety of those around you. First and foremost, remain calm. If you panic, you are much less likely to handle the situation effectively. Second, assess the situation. Is it a situation you can manage on your own safely and comfortably? Or is the situation out of control? If you are not comfortable dealing with the situation or don't know what it is, this is okay. Notify someone immediately who can help and avoid touching things in the area. If you are comfortable and if it is safe, contain the situation. If not, and if the situation poses an immediate threat, evacuate the area. Finally, report the situation, no matter how small, to your instructor and, if appropriate, environmental health and safety and or UTPD. Remain calm. Assess the situation. Contain and clean the situation if you are trained to do so. Evacuate the area if containment is not possible. Report the incident to the appropriate emergency personnel and the lab instructor. Any incident in the lab, no matter how small, should be reported to the lab instructor or your immediate supervisor. You can remember these steps with the acronym RACER. There are several important telephone numbers that should be posted near the entrances of the laboratory, and you should be aware of the location of this list. These numbers include the lab supervisor, UTPD and the fire department, environmental health and safety, or EHS, poison control, and the building manager. In the event of a fire in the laboratory, it is important that you stay calm and act quickly. Before working in the laboratory, you should familiarize yourself with the location of the fire alarm, the fire extinguisher, the safety shower, and the fire blanket. In addition, you should also always know the location of the closest exit of the room and of the building. Should a fire occur in the lab, try to remember RACER. Remain calm. Remaining calm will allow you to make rational decisions and remember your training. Assess the situation. Fires come in a wide variety, from small to large in size, electrical or chemical, and there are special considerations for each type. 
determine if the fire is in your control and if you will need to evacuate. Remember that small fires can spread quickly. Contain the incident. If you've determined that the fire can be safely put out with a fire extinguisher and you've received the appropriate training in handling a fire extinguisher, then you may attempt to do so. Remember to keep a clear escape path in the event that the fire becomes uncontrollable. If the fire is contained in a glass vessel, like a beaker, then it may be extinguished by simply placing a watch glass on top of the opening to suffocate the fire. Fire extinguishers are not designed for large, expanded fire, but rather to control a small fire at the very beginning of the incident. Evacuate the area if the fire cannot be extinguished or if you do not feel capable to do so. Unplug all hazardous lab equipment if it is safe. Alert others in the area of the situation. Close the lab door behind you to prevent the spread of fire and smoke and pull the fire alarm. Follow the planned evacuation route and exit the building. Report the situation to appropriate personnel. UTPD should be notified as soon as possible and you should tell them where you are, where the fire is located, and the source of the fire if known. Follow their instructions and do not re-enter the building unless an all-clear status is given. Chemical and biological spills can pose a large safety hazard for you and others in the laboratory. You should read the SDS for all biological and chemical compounds that you will be working with. The SDS will contain information regarding how to handle a spill and whether special precautions need to be taken. In addition to knowing the SDS information, always be aware of the location of the chemical spill kit located in the laboratory. The contents of the spill kit will vary between different laboratories, but should include a universal spill absorbent, chemical resistant PPE, and hazardous waste disposal bags. An acid spill neutralizer or a base spill neutralizer may be added to the kit if you are working with acids and bases. Should a spill occur, these are the steps you should take. Remain calm. Assess the situation. Determine if the spill is an immediate threat to life or health. This depends on several factors, including the contents of the spill and the size of the spill. If your lab instructor is nearby, you should inform him or her of the incident immediately. Contain the situation. If the spill is minor enough for you to clean up, then follow the appropriate procedure to clean the spill, which will be located on the SDS. Always wear the necessary PPE when cleaning up a spill. Evacuate the area. If the spill is too large to contain, or if it poses an immediate threat to life and health, you should evacuate the building. Close the door to the laboratory. Inform others who might be in danger to evacuate. Report the situation. Once you're away from the danger, report the spill immediately to UTPD and EHS. Inform them of your location, the spill location, approximately how large the spill is, and what the spill consists of. A chemical spill is often accompanied by broken glassware. If glassware is broken in the lab, remain calm. If the broken glassware contained chemicals, inform your lab instructor of the incident to receive further instructions. If the glassware is clean, you may clean it up with a broom and a dustpan. Do not handle broken glassware by hand if possible. Place the broken glassware pieces into the glass waste container. Should an injury occur in the laboratory, you should make your instructor aware of it, regardless of how minor it may seem. After administering first aid, they may send you to the University Health Services office located in the Student Services Building. 
Things that may require first aid in the laboratory may include cuts, lacerations, burns, and biological or chemical exposures. Should an injury or exposure occur to you or another lab worker, try to remain calm. Assess the situation. Determine if the situation is immediately life-threatening. If the injury is life-threatening, you should attempt to administer first aid while someone else calls for emergency medical personnel. In the event of an injury as a result of a biological or chemical exposure, you should consult the first aid section of the SDS for the compound. Minor cuts in the lab can be treated with equipment found in the first aid kit. If someone in the lab has received a serious laceration, emergency medical help should be obtained immediately. Try to keep the wound closed and apply pressure. Minor burns from hot plates and other heat sources can be treated by running the burn under cold water. Ice may be applied if available. If you or a classmate is on fire, go to the closest safety shower and turn it on. If a safety shower is not available, then the victim should stop, drop, and roll. Douse the victim with water to help put out the fire. For minor burns, treat by running cool water over the affected area for 15 minutes. For serious burns, contact emergency medical personnel immediately. If someone is exposed to a chemical or hazardous biological substance, they should go to the nearest hospital. Depending on the severity of the exposure, EMS may need to be contacted to transport the person. Print a copy of the SDS for the person to take to the hospital with them if it is a chemical exposure. If the person is unconscious, you should never move them unless they are in direct risk of further injury from the emergency situation. In the situation, call EMS immediately and wait with the unconscious person if it is safe for you to do so. Again, all injuries requiring first aid should be reported to the lab instructor, no matter how small. Accidental exposure to UV radiation or laser radiation can be hard to identify. Signs and symptoms of an accidental exposure are inflammation of the eye or erythema of the skin similar to a sunburn. If you think you have been exposed to UV or laser radiation, you need to notify EHS and your lab supervisor immediately, discontinue use of radiation producing equipment if possible, and leave the area. Seek immediate emergency medical attention for the skin and the eyes. Radioactive material should only be handled if you're properly trained to do so. In the event of a personal contamination of radioactive material, you should notify EHS and your lab supervisor immediately, noting the survey meter reading and the time of exposure. Remove contaminated clothing. Wash affected areas of the skin with mild soap and warm water and use a survey method to record decontamination. Do not scrub or use hot water as this will push particles deeper into the skin. If radioactive material is spilled, do not panic and try to follow these steps. Remain calm. Assess the situation and determine the size and severity of the spill. Contain the situation. For a small spill, you can follow the appropriate spill decontamination procedure if you're trained to do so. Evacuate the area if the spill is too large. Avoid spreading contamination by removing contaminated clothing. Put protective covers over the shoes before leaving the area. Survey anything and anyone leaving the contaminated area. Report the situation to EHS and your lab supervisor. A building evacuation may be necessary in the event of an incident in a different area of the building, a natural disaster, or other unforeseen incidents. Should a signal be given to evacuate a building, you should remain calm. 
Turn off any lab equipment that may be a fire hazard if possible. Quickly exit the building. Do not take elevators. Lab emergencies are serious situations, and your ability to deal with them will depend on your ability to remain calm and assess the situation. Your response may vary depending on the nature of the emergency and whether or not you are comfortable and able to contain the situation. Remember the acronym RACER and follow these steps when responding to emergencies.